Goodness. there you're in i mean okay so we'll just wait for frederica i'm just going to share this to to the 20s page and i'm going to turn my speaker on but I'll, I'll message frederica that um that we're now in all right okay You ready? Mm -hmm. you turn me off. Yeah.
to se imanakoa Alaha Thank you. Freddie, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me all right, Pavani? Yes, I can, my lord. Okay, so welcome viewers and listeners to the first episode of Tweenies um, Talk Time. Today we have a very, very special guest, the Honorable Frederica Lupe Uluiva Fatafehi Tuita, who is the author of Dancing Shadows. Honorable Frederica Malo Holau Malie, and welcome. And thank you very much for your time. Hello, so, may I start with um, the title of the book, Dancing Shadows? May I please ask how the title of the book came about? Well, the, you know, well, first of all, thank you very much, Bhavani, and I'd also like to thank Twinnies Publishing for being so kind and supportive of my, uh, of my stories. Uh, you know, my parents and I, we talk every day. We talk every day for so long, and there are a few stories that they love to tell us kids over and over again, and one of them... Um, was our mother's story and the most vivid memory that she has of, of her and her grandmother, which is her lying there, and she's lying there as a child and she sees her grandmother, the late Queen Salote, um, her shadows, and she's choreographing, she's dancing um, and, and thinking of how to choreograph a song that she had just written. And she remembers not watching her hands so much, but her her shadow. Shadows. So, so that's why why I thought, okay, so that was the the seed. That was the seed that was planted in my head that um, the story grew from. And so did the other stories that I've written. So that's how I came up with the title Dancing Shadows was because um, that's how it all started. It started with Her Late Majesty's Dancing Shadow, her hands cast on the wall dancing. Yeah. <laughs> But did, did um, your your mother, the the princess um, royal, Princess Bilolevu, helped you with um, picking and choosing the title, or you did it all yourself? I you I, I guess I could say she helped me with with um with the title in the sense that her story is behind everything. It's her story, um, her experience that she shared with me. And that's how I came up with the title was just from her. So in that sense, yes, she did help. Okay, yeah. So moving on to the genre of the book, it is a short story. Um, 
there are very few tone and short, short stories written in the format of short stories. So this is an important accomplishment, particularly when the stories are tongue and short stories and not just any tongue and stories, but the stories of our tongue and royal family members. How did you decide that the story be told in short story format? And as the author, what sort of connections do you hope your readers will have with Dancing Shadows? Well, I suppose um, I didn't. I didn't have a, a, a particular audience in mind when I was writing my stories. The way I wrote it was that I wanted people to be able to relate to relate to my story as well as I did when I list when I'd listen to my parents to my mother tell her story. And I suppose that because she was telling us her memories from the eyes from the perspective of a child because she was a child when when she had these experiences um that was the way that it was conveyed to us it's like through the eyes of a child so the way that i interpreted and rewrote the story was um was just in that way was the way that we were told and so i suppose when i went through it i thought you know what this would be brilliant um for children Sorry. And so that's why that's the only way that's how it sort of just it was all very natural organic there was no um, planning to it. it was just sort of. Um, I think that's what just makes it that much more special is it's it's as though it was meant to be. Sorry. And I don't I'm not sure and please correct me I'm not sure if there are any Tongan sh short stories. Um, and I also understand it is it is hard to write a short story because there are um, uh, there's a limit, um, mm -hmm. which is which you have to pick, you know, the, the important part of the story to tell. Um, was that difficult for you? Uh, I, I don't feel it was difficult because I, I, I was trained as a teacher and I was trained as a, a, um, a primary school teacher. So the way that I explain things, it can be a bit frustrating to adults is because I, I even frustrate my sisters when I explain something to them because I ex explain it like a teacher does to their student. So when it came to writing it, I, I'd be, it, was a, it wasn't too difficult to sort of just uh, limit my explanations down to a certain number of words, just so that it can be conveyed in a simpler way and so that children can understand it. Sorry, you did well, you did well. Um, so who are the main characters um, in the story and how did you choose the character for the short story? Well, I think um, the, the, if there's one person in everyone's life that really has a significant part um, in their life, it's their mother. So, yeah. so it wasn't difficult for me to base my main character on my mother because it, your mother is someone who you know intimately so well, you know, they shaped the person that you are. So, I mean, there's my mother in the main character, uh, but there are also elements of of how I remember how curious I was when I was a child and how I'd try to, to make sense of, of growing up in my family, knowing that my friends and my best friends didn't have the same uh, duties, they didn't have the same responsibilities. So I'd always wonder why, why do I have to sit like that for so long? Why do I have to sit for so long? Why do, why, why me and not her? So that it was that kind of child's mindset. I could imagine my mother had the same, um, oh, yeah. same, you know, things as well. Thoughts growing up as a child. So the main character is based on her, with a little bit of me in there, <laughs> from what I can remember how I used to think growing up as a child. Sorry, sorry. So if we move on to the writing process, um, Frederica, can you share a bit of the experience you went through in the writing process? For example, the, the memories, the emotions, the thoughts you went through um, when writing the story, please. Yeah. Well, I, I suppose um, you, I, every writer, every artist 
has their own way of developing their their expression, their form of expression, whatever it is that they want to um, they want to uh, do and complete. And with me, I have an idea, and I just put it all down on paper. Everything just goes down on paper, and then I might revisit it to tweak it a little bit here and there. But that's why I always I always give thanks not only to to God but also to to my ancestors and my grandmothers, my aunts, my my cousins, my mother, because everything's already set. Everything's already in my head. It's just a matter of putting it down paper. So that's my process. And that was how I wrote Dancing Shadows and every other um, children's story that's in the series. Um, it, it was just all there and it all just flew, I, you know, flowed naturally when I was typing away. And then I just come back to it and, and and make sure that it flowed nicely, that it made sense, that there were no um, grammatical errors. Sure, yeah. <laughs> and that, so it was understood and um, by the reader and felt by the reader. How how long did it take you to write um, Dancing Shadows? Did, did oh, you well, have an approximate like, time frame? Uh, I think um, for Dancing Shadows, it didn't take long for me to type and put out on paper. I would say it, I just, you know, it all just came out within a week. But then coming back to it, I'd have to revisit it and just, you know, um, change it here and there. And then I take out chunks and, and um, change it. You know, then that process took maybe a, almost a month or so. Oh, yeah. Just because I kept wanting to revisit it. And then it sort of just sat there. <laughs> it just sat there until this opportunity came along. And that's why I just thought, oh, this is just all meant to be. Okay. So I'll, I'll stop there regarding the writing because we don't want to give away too much um, today. <laughs> um, so also um, the illustration process, uh, what was it like? having to see the first illustrations of the characters um, done by Twinnies and to see your character um, being drawn into existence. And um, and um, and the late um, Her Majesty Queen Salote, um, are you able to, um, to, to talk to us about what was it like to see the characters drawn? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, it was a, it was a really it was an incredibly moving moment to to see them, especially together, because uh, we we don't have any photographs of of um, her late Majesty with my mother on their own. Uh, oh. There's always the rest of the, the the royal grandchildren, or you know, or you know, it's just the grandchildren alone, or her late Majesty alone. So it was it was very moving. It really was. Um, and then to see the animated uh, illustration where they, there's movement to them, you can see them moving. Oh, that was just that just took it to another level. And we were speechless. All I could say was we. I was almost moved to tears. I even now describing it, it it's an emotional right. um, experience because it's very special and it's 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 so lovely to see them together. It just brings more life to the story. And, and even for me, because the way I imagined them in my, in my mind while I was writing the stories, I just see images, like it's sort of just like a photo, a still image of them um, just caught in a moment and just looking at each other or just looking out or dancing. Oh, so, yeah. so to see them, to see it in front of me, the illustration, and then on top of that, the animation that made it just that was brilliant and a really unforgettable experience. Oh, yeah. And and again, we'll we'll move on um, and leave. We won't we won't discuss any more of, of the animation um, because we would like your the viewers and the listeners to order their copies of either the book yes. or the, the animation. Um, Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal, Princess Alote Mafile of Pilolebu Twitter's involvement with the writing and making of Dancing Shadows. It is indeed a verity to have your mother, um, Her Royal Highness Princess Pilolebu, to be part of a project like this. 
um, can you share a little about how that came about and how your, your mother, Princess Bilorevu, agreed to write the foreword for the book, please? Yes, well, uh, my, my mother was in the process of drafting a foreword for another book for um, a history, I think it was a history book. And um, so I, I, I wasn't too, I wasn't too sure whether or not to approach her uh, straight away, but um, I thought, you know what, it's now or never, and I don't want to keep everyone waiting. And in the end, it, it'll probably be the same answer. It's either a yes or a no. So I just went ahead and I approached her and I, I explained to her what was happening. And she was so, she was, it was just such a blessing because she goes, Freddie, you know, I always wanted to write children's stories. I, I always wanted to write a children's story, but I just never got around to it and I never had the time. So I'm, I'm, I'd be happy to, to draft and write the forward for your book. And so that was, um, that was a real blessing for me. And uh, she wanted to know more. She wanted to know more about the book. And she, we started talking about character development. I said, mom, it's a children's book. <laughs> well, yeah. well, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> well, it's also a, a, a blessing for tweenies, um, Frederica. So thank you very much. Um, we've previously mentioned the animation part. But can, can you also share a little bit about the experience of your um, of, of your of your mother uh, doing the voice for the Dancing Shadows mm -hmm. place? Oh yes, well, I I I had um I had been thinking about how we were going to to script it in a way so that we knew which parts she wanted to do the voiceovers for. And I thought, should we do half and half or should she do the description part? Or, and then, and then I, so I thought, you know what, I'll sleep on it. So I slept on it and I woke up the next day and then I realized she should be doing the voice of the character based on her late majesty. It's only appropriate as she, she's her granddaughter. She was the closest one to her. And I didn't think it would be appropriate for me to do it. Absolutely not. So that's why I said, I'll just reserve her voice for her late grandmother's um, uh, characters uh, parts in the story. So that's how we decided to, to um, allocate who says what. And when I, uh, when I shared that with her, she said, yes, that would be, she was very happy with that arrangement. Oh, yeah. See, after the, after the interview today, I'm sure that all our viewers and listeners will jump online and order their, their book today. Um, <laughs> regarding <laughs> regarding your, um, the targeted audience, who, who are the main targeted audience of the short story and what you, you already mentioned, um, it's a children's book, and, but why, why did you target it that demographic in particular? Yes. Well, um, touch on it before, but if, if you don't mind, can you please? Um... No, no worries. Yeah, no problem. It's, it's easy. It's because I have a daughter. I have a daughter and, you know, in this day and age, we want to um, share as much of our strength and as much of our stories with our young girls as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. So even though it's a beautiful and um, it's a beautiful story, but uh, the series is also, I hope it's an empowering one for, right. for young girls. Definitely. And that's why, that's why I, it was so important for me to, to share my stories. And I wanted it to resonate uh, with everyone, not just with Tongans, but right. with all young girls, because, um, I just, it, it's, they're just such a vulnerable group, you know, our, our little girls. And, and I just want them to know that they have, um, they can find strength within themselves, which is the main theme of, of the, of this story. And that's how sort of just, I started to build it up around that demographic, which are young, our young girls, our young daughters. Go yeah. And, and I think they're very fortunate, um, uh, Frederica, because we not not only the the young children, but the rest of 
the, the Tongan um, community and non-Tongans because you have given us an insight, uh, an opportunity and an insight to have the royal family. So I think, um, again, our viewers can't wait to order their, their books after this. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so you already mentioned um, Sirius. So one of the interesting and important development with the book is that um, it's being launched in a collection. So we have a signed and unsigned hard copies. We have the animation version of the book and bookmark. Yeah. Can you share with the audience how the Dance in Shadow collection came into development? And as the author, how does it feel to see your short story in a book format and not only that but um, you know, extend it to a collection please i would never have even i would never have I, I i didn't i had never i would never be able to even um i wouldn't know where to start sorry even with that sentence i was stuttering because i didn't even know where to start with my sentence and this, that just shows how I had never even dreamt that my stories would become a published book, let alone um, have all these other elements to it, that it would be animated, that there would be a bookmark associated with it that would come from it. So all these ideas that Twinnies Publishing came up um, and, and pitched for, with me, I, I thought that was wonderful. And I was very grateful for these great ideas that, that came from it. Sorry. I also understand that this is a series of short stories. Are you able to give, give us a, a, a little sneak peek to what the other two upcoming titles of the remaining two stories are, please? Yes, yes. Well, um, again, the, the whole series, I just wanted to focus on empowering our young, our children, especially young girls. But I also, I, I also shared that this story is based here in Tonga. So I wanted to show the beauty of Tonga in it. Oh, yeah. um, I wanted to, to show um, our cultural uh, beliefs when it comes to our environment and how much we care about our environment and balancing our um, love of each other with the love of our environment because that was something very special to Her Late Majesty as well was that um, there was always balance. So we take care of each other and we take care of the land as well oh, yeah. and the sea. So those are, uh, I, did, I don't want to go into too much detail, but that's a little, you know, insight into the, the next two stories or who knows all, however more. <laughs> we can all use our imagination now, but we, we can't wait. We can't wait. Um, so would, do you have any plan or intention to translate your short stories into Tongan or any other languages in the future? Yes, I'd love to. I'd love to because especially when it comes to uh, describing our environment and um, you know, elements in the story, which I think just make the story that much brighter. Uh, it, when, you, when you say it in Tongan, it just brings more color and context to it. And uh, it, it, in this day and age, I mean, I can't even say that I'm very confident with my Tongan speaking uh, language capabilities. So that's why it's important. If, if the opportunity came up and I wanted, we could um, share a Tongan translation, that would be wonderful. Oh, yeah. we're, we're looking forward to, to that day. <laughs> yes. I'm sure that someone out there is waiting um, to help <laughs> <laughs> translate it into Tongan. Um, we'll put it out there into the universe. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. One, one final question. Um, how are you finding the, the collaboration processes and the relationship, working relationship with Tweenies as your publisher and editor? Well, it's... Um... It just happened also naturally. I, I think that I, when you contacted me, okay. um, you know, not too long ago to do the voiceover for Gava, for Gava. the Gava story. Oh, yeah. and, um, and, and I thought, my goodness, how, that, you know, I just thought what a coincidence that you would, uh, um, you know, connect with, or you'd contact me and then connect me with Twinnies and we do this. 
so then uh, that's how it started. And then I started talking with um, Twinnies Publishing and saying, oh, you well, you know, I, I, there are st other stories. There's this story that I've, and they thought, oh my goodness, yes, that's, um, that's a great opportunity. And I thought, yes, it is. Please, can we make it happen? Thank you, God. <laughs> It was a so blessing. <laughs> yes, and it, yes, and it just and it's happened so quickly. Um, and I'm very grateful for the timing of it all. Uh, I had no problem with it, especially with um, uh, the transfer because I just transferred from Prime Minister's office to the Ministry of Tourism, oh. and uh, things were were a little busy. And yet, it was still you know we, we could still make time to uh, work on the on the stories. So I thought meant to be, that's the theme of uh, 2021 <laughs> into 2022. Well, with that, Mark Goloa, for Twinnies. Um, so finally, uh, Frederica, is there anything else you would like to share with our viewers and our listeners today before I may I say to Una? Oh, yes, thank you very much, Bhavani. Um, I just want to thank everyone for putting in uh, your orders and and to, to you know, um, if you haven't, please, I mean, just uh, order the book because it is such a beautiful story. And I it was something very special that's uh, been really passed down from generation to generation. And and um, it, it's just such a privilege to be able to share it with everyone. Oh, yeah, Malo. Thank you very much, um, Honourable Frederica, for your for your time and for trusting Twinnies, the the first fully um, Tongan owned publishing house here in Australia to publish yes. um, your work. So uh, Twinnies yes. would like to wish you the very very best for two thousand and twenty two. Um, and lastly, to our viewers and list and listeners, please pre order your book. You don't want to miss out. Um, feel free to order more than one, um, many, many, many copies directly from the Twinnies <laughs> website, twinniesbooksandgoods.com or contact us directly. Malo albito me afetuna tu alfato. Alfato, malo. Alfato.